Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Wave at WPI, checking in with 4610H coming in. That is the Happy Hobos coming in from New Jersey. Uh, fantastic season last year, especially a good world's performance as well. Uh, but this is their first event here at the Over Under. Uh, it's a signature event and absolutely phenomenal looking robot. We'll be doing a full detail of this whole thing. Uh, really cool uh, blocker as well. A lot of integration that we'll be going through around here. So I can't wait to talk more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Max, we got to start talking about one of the big show pieces you're about is that blocker. So talk to me about what's gone into that and, uh, you know, watching you on the field, you got a lot of offensive power, but some great defensive power too. Yeah, of course. So this is our blocker. It's a two-stage. It's pneumatic. So what happens is first it lays down here. You got this bottom piece, which is powered by these two pistons, um, and that shoots up. And then the top piece here is activated by this string, which is locked under our rotational puncher. Um, what's cool about this is if you put it down, uh, since it is powered uh, by pistons, um, we have the string here. So since it crosses over our puncher and we needed a way to shoot tri balls when this is down, uh, we just use two pieces of string that become loose when it folds so the puncher can still uh, be used while we have this down. And then when it folds back up, that string becomes tight and no tri balls can pass through. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, pretty much when we designed it, we basically saw other robots that also had a design where they could lift their puncher and decided that we needed a way to block that and play defense in the event that they start match loading. This is uh, one of the taller blockers, you know, how tall is this actually going up? Um, I think it's about 46. Uh, wow. With the lift fully extended and the blocker fully activated. So is this, I mean, this could be the tallest blocker in VRC right now. Uh, yes, we think, we're pretty sure it's the tallest blocker here at WPI at least. That's very cool. I, wow, like when, he, when that came up and I'm like, all right, it looks tall, but that is like yeah. a whole new level coming out yeah, there. Yeah, we get, we get right behind the bot and it's, it's game over. That's very cool on there. Love, love the design that's gone into that. Let's keep moving on. Uh, speaking about kind of this area here, Nathan's going to be talking about the PTO uh, that you're using on your bot uh, and also a ratchet as well too. And we'll kind of go through some evolution of your design. So if you uh, look at the back of the robot where the PTO is powered here, we can see that this one gear here, it's, it's mirrored on the other side, is, um, is powered by a piston, and the piston shifts, shifts the gear between, you can see the driven gear and the motor down there, and then the lift, lift, gear, uh, lift gear, which is connected to a sprocket, which is then geared up all the way into the lift. And then basically our ratchet mechanism is that when we go to hang, we need to make sure that we stay hung after the match ends. So when we're up, when we press the button, this ratchet, um, this piece of C-channel releases a string, which releases a ratchet. And you can see right here, the screw head locks on this sprocket. And then as we go down, you can see that the robot actually, like the, robots, the robot stays put. And this way we can guarantee that uh, we stay home. Do you have any wear on this gear coming in uh, when, you're, when you're having that, that bolt there? You're, you're talking metal on plastic, right? Have you seen any wear down or anything like that? So initially, we actually mirrored this ratchet on the other side, but we found that the one was strong enough. And through various scrimmages, we found that there was basically no wear. And if there was wear, it's easy to replace and put back. Very cool. Talk to me about the uh, evolution of your uh, punching mechanism too. So on our puncher, let me just put down the blocker. So we, if you look here, how we have a C-channel, we initially had a couple flex wheels on here, and we found that the flex wheels could actually launch the tri-balls further, but because we value consistency over raw speed and power, we found that the C-channel could directly, like, um, it influences how the tri-ball rolls. So in this case, the tri-ball would actually roll forward. And then our, and then our catapult goes around 110 tri-balls per minute, so we can get the entire 22. We timed it at home, it was 12.21 seconds. Wow, definitely quick cycle times on there. Uh, I think there's a little bit of story in this next one, but you gotta tell me about the uh, unpluggable battery uh, that's in your robot. So talking about the story behind it, uh, and if we can show off uh, where that is so we can take a look. 
Yeah, so our last year during Worlds, we, we used to have like that same battery attachment with the plastic. And one thing that happened is during comp, it got pushed out, the battery got unplugged. And because of that, we actually lost a match and our ranking went down. I think from two to like five. And it, it was detrimental. That's why this year, could you lift it up? Yeah, this year we actually have a little alcove for our battery that you can just lift up by pushing it down underneath here. And you can get the battery up like that. And with that, the battery won't be unplugged. And it's nice and secure. It's easy to replace. And there's no risk of our robot just shutting down mid-competition. Well, I'm glad you thought that through. I know uh, you're all seniors this year too, so that's definitely something you don't want to see a repeat yeah. of uh, in your last events as you go through. So super cool with that. And starting to wrap up on this robot, uh, Aiden, talk to me about uh, the wings and slides that you have on the front of the bot. Yeah. Uh, anything uh, in particular you want to point out for it? Uh, so, overall, this fantastic machine. So yeah, we kind of have the standard locking wings. And they, so yeah, our wings pop out and then they lock. And we have the, uh, like a lot of teams, we have the next stand up on the front bent so that they'll scoop underneath the tri balls so we can push them over the middle barrier pretty easily. And we also have our sleds on the inside of the robot, which are curved to allow us to like ramp up onto the middle bar, cross it. Originally, we put the sleds on the outside, which obviously, if it's open, we can't cross, so right. we just move them on. And now they're like this. When you're looking at, uh, you know, this is your, your first you know, signature main event you've been to, are there any big changes you might be already looking at for a next iteration of your robot? So essentially we have a PTO that powers our lift, but we've seen that many teams can accomplish basically the same thing but with only two pistons. And two pistons is much lighter than a whole gearbox on both sides of the robot. So I think for our next iteration of the robot we will be moving to a piston lift. And additionally, we can currently get to that C tier hang, but we would like to go a little higher and we and we think by uh, making the lift higher, we can attach more mechanisms that can get us to the D, E, and maybe the F tier. Well, looking forward to that. But of course, looking forward to hear uh, your performance at the Wave at WPI. So best of luck here at this event. Thanks a lot for telling us about your team and your robot. And can't wait to see how you do it throughout the entire season. Thanks a lot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.